Good morning. It's good to have all of you here in this church this morning. I'm so happy that all of you have come to worship just a few days away from Christmas, uh, celebrating the birth of our Savior. Um, and so it's always good to have all of you here worshiping with us. And to those who are tuning in live uh, and watching our services, we too love that you have chosen St. John the Divine to be your spiritual home this morning. We love having you part of our church. And we encourage you, as you feel more and more comfortable, uh, to come and join us for worship on a Sunday morning. We love having you um, in church. And those of you that have been and watching our services online and who are here now know that it's not the same not being actually in church. So we do want you to know how much we love to see you back here in church. You know, several weeks ago, we began a brand new sermon series called Lighting the Way to Bethlehem. And we're only a few days away from that amazing event when Christ comes to us in this manger. And today I want to kind of continue this sermon series by giving you a topic that I think every single one of us, especially now, need to hear. And I want to talk to you today about giving value to people. The word value means to give to people importance, honor, merit, worth. God had a dream when he came into that manger on December 25th. 2,000 years ago. He dreamed that there'd be a world that would give value to people, that would honor people, give importance to people. He had a dream, but for, for, for as we see out in our world right now, his dream, though, isn't really becoming a reality. We're living in a world that more and more is telling us who we should value, and more importantly, how we should value them. Let me take you on a little bit of a journey. For those of you that are your young people that are in school, the world tells you to value people who are the most popular in school. Maybe the ones that you think are the most athletic or maybe the ones that are the most beautiful people, the ones that have influence. The world tells you you should value them, but to devalue that little kid that's a quote unquote nerdy kid. That one that's a little bit socially awkward, has that funny laugh or whatever. That person, you can devalue them. In the workforce, many of us, we give value. The world tells us to value the CEO, the people that have power, the people that can influence your career. But devalue that janitor or that person who's underneath you. You even hear people sometimes say, that person's only friends with them because of what they can do for them, because of how they can help them out. And dare I say, sometimes the world tells us how we should value in places of worship, where we only sometimes value the people that give the most amount of money. Maybe we only value the young people and forget about the older people. Sometimes we're living in a world that is telling us who we should value and who we should devalue. But I want to give you some words of encouragement this morning. And that is, church family, how you see people will determine how you treat people. The more values you give to this world, the more you have the power to change the world. The more value you give to this world, the more valuable the world becomes. I love the book of Philippians. Perhaps one of my favorite books in the Bible. It's a book that's written when Paul is in jail in Rome. If you're ever in a bad mood or ever need just a word of encouragement in your own life, open up the book of Philippians. Because it's all about joy in difficult times. But Paul in the book of Philippians challenges everyone, challenges people on how we should value the world. Listen to what he says. He says, do not do anything out of selfishness. How many of us could check the box and say, yeah, at times I simply just value people because of what they can do for me and devalue the people that don't do anything for me. He says, don't do anything out of selfish ambition, but listen to this word, value, value others above yourself. Like God tells us, listen, you want to know what it looks like to be a Christian? Don't talk about it. Don't even label yourself as a Christian. Show it. I give value to the people that the world may devalue. So how do we go about giving value to a world that's telling us constantly to devalue people? I want to use December 25th, 
the events that took place when Christ was born to show you how he tells all of us to give value to the world. Here's number one. We give value to the world when we see people the way God saw us. Do you know how thick our skin is? It's only one sixteenth of an inch. Yet wars have been started. Racism has taken place. People have been divided. Not just in this country, but throughout the world on one sixteenth of an inch. But I think about what we heard this morning. Many of you are listening to those genealogies of how all of the ancestry of Christ. And if you're one of these people that kind of come to church and you hear these genealogies, or if you're like me as a priest, you're reading all these names. And sometimes when you're reading all these names, you have no idea who all of these people are. But in the very first chapter, Matthew shares the names of Christ's grandparents. And in an unbelievable way, he shares all of these people who are on the lineage of Christ. And if you're just reading through it, you'll totally ignore it. But in the Jewish custom at that time, they would never mention a woman in a genealogy. It was always based on the father. Because the father is what carried on the name, the name of the family. Yet in the book of the genealogies, four women are mentioned four grandmothers of Jesus. They are Thamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba. When you listen to this sermon again, I want you to research all of these people. These women were not people that the world valued. Why in the world would God allow Matthew to put four women, or to be quite honest with you, 42 men, whose life is totally questionable. I think one of those lessons was is that God was saying, even in my lineage, I'm gonna show you who I value. The world may devalue them, but I see importance in them. I see value in all of them. Christ's bloodline is filled with people that are just like us, people that make mistakes. And how would it look like if all of us as Christians, that when we saw people, we didn't look at that one sixteenth of an inch. We didn't see them. We saw him inside of them. When you go out today and you're at that restaurant or maybe at the football game, you're tempted to devalue people. Don't look at that one sixteenth of an inch. You're not judging them. You're looking at him who is inside of them. Here's number two. We value people by treating them the way God treated us. Don't you kind of think sometimes that God who put every grain on this pew and every little thread that's in this carpet and every blade of grass that's out on that field and every leaf that's on this tree and every single universe that is all the universes in the world, the same God could have found a hotel that did not have a no vacancy. Like why did God get born on that night when there was no space at the end? Like he could not have been born the next day. Maybe there was a vacancy sign lit up for them that night. Why did he choose to have that? Why did he choose to be born in a cave? When you look at the history of caves in Bethlehem, this is so important to remember everyone. It is not the nice nativity scenes that we see in front of our homes. Where everyone is just so nice and the hay in there is all clean. Caves were meant for storing 50 to 100 dirty sheep. The sheep would sometimes live in that cave for not just a couple of hours, but for days, doing all that they could do in a day. It was the dirtiest place. And yet Christ, the light of the world, chose to be born in a dark, dirty, messy cave. Why? Could it not be that God was telling all of us, when I'm coming into this world, I'm coming into the mess of this world to change the world. Maybe even said a little bit differently, I'm coming into the mess of your soul and of my soul. That I don't see your mess, I see you as my masterpiece. That maybe God was telling us, I could be born in that nice Ritz-Carlton hotel, but no, I'm, being cho I'm choosing to be born in a dirty cave to show all of you visually 
what it means of how much I love you. And what would it look like if we didn't see people's mess when we judged them, but we saw them as God's masterpiece? What would that look like for you this week? Listen to me, church family. You may be tempted on the road leading out of this church to look at the mess and not the masterpiece. You may be tempted when you're at the mall like me this week, parking a car, trying to find a parking space, and your temperature gets ri rising because someone just blocked or took your parking space. Don't look at the mess. You're looking at the masterpiece. You're not looking at them. You're looking at the spirit inside of them. And here's number three. Is that we value people by seeing them the way God saw them, treating them the way God treated us, and realizing that every single person has value to give. Let me go back to that story of the nativity. Why did Jesus choose shepherds? Like we take all of this for granted, but why did Jesus choose the first people? And by the way, God had not spoken from the last book of the Old Testament, which is the book of Malachi, by the way, in the very first book of the New Testament, which is the Gospel of Matthew, God had not spoken for 500 years in writing. Why did the first time God spoke was to shepherds? Because shepherds had no value at that time. You know, the shepherds, they would raise the lambs that would go to be sacrificed in Jerusalem. Do you know that those, that those little shepherds that are in the shepherd's field, they could not walk the five miles to go to Jerusalem. Why? Because they were dirty. Because they were handling things that were dirty. Shepherds would literally stop right there at the border between Bethlehem and Jerusalem. But God said, you know what? They have something to offer. And all of us have things that we can offer this world. Don't allow yourself to, put, to see people through your eyes, but to see them through God's eyes. I'll leave you with this. There's a very famous story of a priest who was starting a new parish. And he was starting this parish. It was a very large community. And as he was going to the parish, he, he wanted to meet with the, what well, let's just call the parish council president. And he told the parish council president, he said, listen, I want to do a little exercise on this new church that I'm going to be pastoring and being the priest over. Don't tell anyone that, who I am and when I, where I'm going to be at sitting in the pews. But I'm going to simply dress up like a homeless man. I'm just going to simply dress like a homeless man, and all I want you to do is just play the role. That morning, the, the parish council president did as he was told, and as he was going to, as the, pray, the priest was going around, he started to ask people in his role as a homeless man, right before church, right before the services began, do you have a few dollars that I can get from you? Only three of the 1,000 members of that community gave him anything. He then went on and uh, as he was kind of going to sit in the, one of the first pews in the church, as he was walking down, the ushers of the church said, hey, no, no sir, uh, you may want to sit in the very far back. That's where you probably need to sit is in the very far back. And the man just simply said, okay, and went and sat in the very far back of the church. Then that parish council president, he comes up to the pulpit. He says, okay, everyone, so excited to share with all of you. This morning, our new priest, his name is Father Jeremiah. Everyone give him a big round of applause. And so the people start clapping and they're all giving a standing ovation. And they're looking around to see where Father Jeremiah is. But Father Jeremiah is not there. Then all of a sudden, this homeless man, Father Jeremiah, starts to walk from that back pew down the center aisle. The people in the pew start going, what, why is this guy doing this? Such a distraction in the middle of the service. Why is he coming down here? Father Jeremiah keeps walking down, down the aisle, and the people start to clap less and less. <clears throat> he gets up on the pulpit and he says to them, good morning, I'm Father Jeremiah. I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty. And you didn't give me something to drink. I was in need. And you didn't care for me. He says, when I look out, all I see is a lot of people. But what I need to see is a church. Can I just encourage all of you church family? Let us never be a church that simply looks out at the world with our eyes. But not look at them with God's eyes. 
Let us always be a people that sees people the way God saw them, that we treat people the way God treated us, and that we know that there is value in every single person. Because the way you see people will determine how we treat people. The way we value this world gives us the tools that God is yearning for us to have to change this world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.